You're listening to the Food Truck Empire podcast, where we talk about great food, big trucks, and how to launch a profitable food truck business. Here's your host. Oh yeah, welcome to episode number 23, whether you're listening from the truck on your iPhone or at home on your desktop computer. Thanks for budgeting a little bit of time for the Food Truck Empire podcast. Today we've got Greg Bless from Roaming Hunger with us, to, who's going to be sharing three tips for booking more catering gigs in 2014, in addition to talking about some of the trends and changes that he's seeing on the ground floor within the industry. And spoiler alert, catering is probably going to become an even bigger deal to an increasing number of food truck entrepreneurs in the very near future. But before we dive into our main course, however, I want to remind you that since it's the first week of December, I'm already looking for yet another food truck to help fund and feature this month. As my regular listeners will know uh, to the podcast already, I'm contributing to one food truck's crowdfunding campaign each month and featuring them on the show. Two months ago, I featured Switch It Up from Albuquerque, New Mexico, and last month it was the runner-up of the Great Food Truck Race. Ticket Ticket Taco that was featured. And if I were a betting man, I'd wager that you'll be hearing a little bit more from Anthony from Switch It Up very soon on the podcast. He's a super smart guy, and I'm excited to have him on here more frequently. So you know what that means. If you know of a deserving food truck that needs a little bit of funding this month and has an active Kickstarter, Indiegogo, or Foodstart.com campaign, tell me about it on Twitter or Facebook so that I can find out more about them and check out what they've got going on. As per the usual, the show is sponsored by Foodstart.com where you can get $1,000 in seed capital just for being a listener to the program. Check out the Fund Your Truck page on FoodTruckEmpire.com for the details. And with that, let's dive straight into today's main course. Okay, today we've got Greg Gless with us here from Roaming Hunger, probably the biggest food truck consulting slash marketing business on the planet, in my opinion. And you guys have helped thousands of entrepreneurs get started over the years. And thanks for joining me, first of all, Greg. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Well, before we get started, how about just adding a little bit of color to your background and tell me a little bit about yourself, your background, and how you first got involved in the food truck business in the first place, Greg. So I was actually uh, studying entrepreneurship at the University of Southern California, and um, I got hooked up with the founder of Roaming Hunger as he was first starting to uh, launch things um, through our connections, our mutual connections. Um, essentially, Roaming Hunger started off as a food truck aggregate, um, more of a catalog where people could go and look at all of the food trucks' Twitter feeds. Uh, because that's back when Kogi was first, uh, first launching and Really, people would identify the trucks and find out where they're located by looking you know, at their Twitter postings. And it became a, kind of a headache to have to follow, you know, several dozen of these trucks' Twitter feeds at some time. And then people started running in and asking if uh, Roaming Hunger could start adding a map um, aspect to the website where people could look at a Google-style map and pinpoint all of the trucks nearest to them. Um, so we created that. And then from there, people started contacting us, asking about um, getting some of these food trucks booked. So uh, what we were doing is um, we started getting leads and going basically asking as a food truck broker, um, matching up the, the client with the available trucks in the area and, and kind of seeing who would be a good match based off their uh, their location and budget and the truck availability and things of that nature. Um, and from there, we started doing much larger events, including huge marketing takeovers. Um, so, for example, Heineken reached out to us, and uh, we did a promotion nationwide where we uh, completely wrapped a food truck in Heineken logos and graphics and the truck would go around into different markets handing out food to promote the brand. Um, so that's something we've evolved into as well. And we've gotten to the point where we're really helping people that aren't even in the business yet 
starting their, uh, you know, getting their business off the ground. So if you make a mean, um, you know, sandwich or, uh, you know, a taco or something and you want to start your own food truck business, we can act as consultants and walk you through the entire process uh, from start to finish. We work with builders and um, we work with insurance agents and can get you financing and really from start to finish, um, you know, we kind of can do everything for you. So um, when I came on, I was actually just adding food trucks to the database of Roaming Hunger um, and kind of being the head liaison for the company with all of the trucks. And um, kind of as this business started to grow, I, I started managing more of these events and and kind of helping everyone else that we brought on. And and now I focus primarily on our big corporate events um, that are, you know, several thousand people. Um, and I, you know, help aggregate those as well as kind of look at where new opportunities for business are. Very cool. What's the time frame that Roaming Hunger got started and then the time frame that you joined on? It sounds like you got on pretty early in the, the process. Yeah, so Roaming Hunger was started uh, I think in the late summer of 2009, so about uh, okay. September, and I came on board. Of, well, old in food truck time. <laughs> yeah, right? So uh, and then I, I came on board uh, about August 2010, so the company was a good year old um, when I was brought on. That's cool. Yeah, it sounds like you basically just listened to the audience and then just adapted to fit their needs after that based on who is visiting and what they're asking for you and just filling those needs and just kind of following that process. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, we've done all size events from, you know, the smallest of kids' birthday parties, mm-hmm. uh, or, you know, Susie and her 20 friends yeah. to, uh, <laughs> you know, helping cater Google's annual bring your parents to work day where we, handed out about 10,000 orders in, in just an hour. Um, so we really can, you know, do in all ranges of uh, size parties. So before we get into the main questions, and I know we're going to talk specifically about how you can book more catering gigs, but I just want to get a little bit clearer picture on the services that you provide potential food truck owners that are just getting started and interested, you know, if somebody came to you and approached you, you'd be able to, I'd imagine, provide them with training on how to operate a food truck, marketing training, how to get connected to a food truck manufacturer, that sort of thing. Am, am I right with that? Right. So we've actually partnered with builders all over the country. Um, and so depending on, you know, where the prospect of food truck owners located, we'll, we'll partner them with different builders, you know, also depending on their cost or excuse me, their budget and how much they're willing to spend and, and whether they want to lead use their own and, and kind of the quality of the truck they're looking for. So, um, we first start off and, and usually when someone's looking to, to build a food truck, the first thing we tell them is, you know, you have to figure out what your menu is and kind of what your concept is. And from there, you know, we can build everything off that. Okay. So today I know our focus and we could talk about all kinds of things as they relate to food trucks, I'm sure. But today we're going to focus on just catering and we're going to talk about the, the three main things you can do to book more catering gigs for your truck. And before we get into the recommendations, I saw a poll recently on mobilecuisine.com that said roughly one out of every four food trucks got the majority or the the biggest bulk of their sales from doing catering gigs. Is this accurate, accurate from what you're seeing on the ground as well, that about a quarter or so or maybe even more get the majority of their income by booking catering gigs? Oh, um, I mean, I'm surprised it was that low. I, I would say okay. all trucks, for most trucks, would say a majority of their business is from catering. Uh, okay. When we- so it's not just parking on the side of the road as you might imagine from, you know, the great food truck race or something. So a lot of people when we first started asked, is food truck, are are the food trucks, the gourmet food trucks, is this a trend? And 
what we've realized is when trucks pull up on the side of the street and people pull over and, and rush after them, that was the trend. Uh, but catering is definitely here to stay. I mean, we're working with, uh, you know, Fortune 50 companies and, so, you know, some of the biggest organizations in the world doing their corporate catering using these gourmet trucks. So, um Really, the the street side vending isn't as uh, popular as it was when the movement first started. Uh, and we've definitely seen the majority of business shift into catering. Um, so I'm, I was actually I'm very surprised that only a quarter of the trucks say that's where a majority of their business comes from. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Maybe just an evolution of the catering business and how it's delivered. So. Clearly, at the end of the day, catering is an important income stream for most food trucks, if not the most important food truck or revenue stream, whether it's 25% or 50% or whatever the number is. So let's dive into the three different ways that you recommend food truck owners can book more catering gigs. And Greg, you were kind enough to send me the three main bullet points prior to the interview, so I appreciate that. So we'll, we'll just start off with number one. You said... The number one way that you can help to book more catering gigs is to keep a clean and polished website. Can you give a little more detail on that? Yeah. So typically, um, people may visit a website after you know trying your food somewhere or or just googling. And in the same way that we tell people that want to build a food truck to brand their i you know their truck, their wrap, and their website a certain way. You know, it's, ne- it's definitely no different um, with your uh, mobile website. I mean, people, when you come to a, a nice-looking website, you know, you're engaged. Uh, you just want to stay there. It looks exciting. And same thing when, uh, you know, you're looking to book a truck. If it's a nice-looking website and has a good, clean-looking menu, it, you know, it'll really kind of catch the eye, and, and that could be the difference in someone um booking your truck versus, you know, going elsewhere. So the problem is, is we actually, you know, have come across a good amount of trucks who who don't have a website but maybe just have a Facebook or a Twitter account. And um, when we recommend a, you know, potential client who wants to book them for catering, it's really tough to send them a sample of, of what this truck does because they don't really have a website and there's really no way for us to convey what the truck is all about, you know, who owns it, what their history is, their background, and, and kind of what their concept is. So having an actual website as opposed to something on social media is, is definitely um, step number one. Yeah, for sure. And I'm glad that you brought up the food trucks that just have a Facebook or a Twitter point too, because that was one of the things that I wanted to ask about with you too on, on that one. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. That's a, that's a really good point. So number two important thing to booking more catering gigs is it sounds like having a a menu also that's available on the website. Even trucks that do have websites um, may not have a menu, and you know people may go there but not really know what they could be getting. Also, the fact that if you have um, a professional looking menu you know, people will definitely be more interested in it. I mentioned that um, hiring a photographer um, to take pictures of food can, you know, make a huge difference. Uh, I remember when I was first adding trucks to the website, I would go to some of uh, the the trucks' menus and, and look at the food items and would get, like, really hungry and be like, wow, that looks amazing. I want that right now. And um, just because it was, like, a very nice-looking photo and very... Uh, you know, it was just taken with an iPhone, um, and it made me want that food. So I can only imagine someone that's actually looking to book the truck and, you know, what they think when they come across um, a clean-looking menu that has photos and a nice description that really um, catches the eye of the, uh, of the audience. Um, trucks can easily, you know, find someone on Craigslist for, for pretty cheap um, if they want, you know, photos taken, and, um, same thing with, you know, a graphic designer. If they want to have someone piece together a nice PDF of a menu, 
Um, it, it's not very expensive, and it'll definitely uh, be you know a good return on that investment. Yeah, for sure. Another great place.